Hi everyone, Daniel Hayashi here, and I just want to say welcome to CPI Day. So, last night I did technical analysis, and that's basically a technical look at the chart, not taking into account any fundamental data, which would be economic data, the Fed, CPI, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. And just looking at areas of support and resistance, moving averages, even price action, which is how I normally trade, but I've kind of thought more about how can one person that wants to make quality trades and have a better edge in the market use both technical data, support, resistance, moving averages, price action, and fundamental data, like releases of news and minutes from the Fed and CPI data, which is super, super important. Excuse me. <laughs> so, what is CPI? CPI report stands for the Consumer Price Index Report. Now, the CPI report that came out today was actually giving us all the consumer price data from the entire month of July. So, that's why we're on August 10th. It takes a little while for, <clears throat> for the Fed to come together with that data and compile it in the report. You knew just as a consumer how prices had changed in the month of July, you would have noticed that gas prices seemed to cool down a little bit. I do remember them being around 657 here in California where I live. And then I noticed in July towards the end, there were times when it was 550 or below, which was an interesting thing to observe, and that's definitely in the CPI report. Now Knowing that information and not knowing everything, but having that as a consumer at my disposable, <laughs> disposable disposal, I can say with some certainty that the report would show that prices have gone down a little bit because the biggest question in everyone's mind is, okay, how is inflation doing? How are prices rising in the month of July? Now, Anyone that <laughs> purchases gas could have made some kind of speculation about that. Now, the thing that was so bullish for the market but on the fundamental perspective was that there was no change in the price of gas and consumer goods. And it was huge news for the market because that means that the Fed's efforts to stall and basically stagnate inflation have been working. So... Let's look at how I saw things from a technical perspective on Tuesday night, and then we'll go to what actually happened Wednesday morning. So I was looking here, and I noticed that there was a ma major resistance here at 417, and then at the 4 413 level, and going back in the past, history does like to repeat itself. When these resistances were touched before, it had huge gap downs. So I was looking to see, like, if it's struggling up here, SPY, the overall market, it's possible it could go to 400 or even 390s or even worse in the 370s. There was a lot of potential room from a technical perspective to the downside, but that's not taking into account fundamental analysis of CPI data. So I got clobbered by missing that data and by ignoring it and holding some trade overnight. That was a rookie fundamental mistake from a technical analysis point of view. So you would think, okay, maybe history will repeat itself. It might go down here. It might go down here. And it, that could happen technically, but when you have the data we have with the CPI report, it takes all technical analysis out the window. It doesn't matter. The market is emotional. So it reacted very emotionally and very algorithmically to that news. And instead of going where my technical analysis thought it would go, down, 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 it popped up to 419. It has been struggling a little bit at the 420 level, so we'll have to see what tomorrow brings. But there isn't any direct overhead resistance really until past that, but that's a very logical round number, 420. <laughs> and, you know, they might create a new resistance just because there wasn't something in the recent or more for far away past doesn't mean that the chart can't rewrite new history. So we'll see what happens tomorrow anyway. 
I hope that gave you some perspective on the technical analysis versus fundamental analysis perspective and why sometimes in order to have the best edge in the market, it's good to take both analysis, learn as much as you can about both things and bring them together and think both ways, not just one like I did. All right. Well, anyway, best of luck in the markets and hope to see you again soon. Bye.